Hey guys, thanks for checking out Tiny Menace Apparel, uh, building a brand. So, uh, these first few episodes are more like a vlog where I just talk about what's going on and then maybe I'll, uh, make them more, you know, I'll organize the videos better and I'll make, uh, intro, outro, all that stuff. And I don't know, uh, my focus is the clothing line, but, um, in releasing these videos, I want to, uh, give people tips so then they don't make the same mistakes that I did. So I say that constantly in every video just to let you know why the video is like this, why it's not like professionally lit or whatever. It's because I just want to give you guys the information and then hopefully you guys take some of the information, you know, whatever you guys want to take from it, but you take some of the information, uh, you learn from my mistakes, you see what mistakes I've made and maybe you'll go and try to do the same thing and bump your head or you might succeed. I don't know, who knows, but uh, in this episode, I want to talk to you about uh, family uh, and friends, friends and family. Uh, one of the main things that I get is, did your friends and family help you with your business? Now, of course, if you have a big family, you have friends and all that stuff, you can lean on them for help and support and all that stuff. But when you start your business, you should focus on and expect to do everything yourself. So what do I mean by that? So when you first launch the business, you're gonna tell your friends first. Then you tell your brother, your sister, your family members, you tell them, hey, think about starting this brand. You tell them, you know, this is the name. And sometimes people expect, or maybe you would expect them to be on the same level of excitement as you. Um, and when you launch, then you expect everyone on your friends list to uh, purchase. So that's not always the case, it depends. Uh, some people, you know, they send out 100 emails to all their friends and 90 of them buy. But in reality, when you send out 100 emails, maybe five will buy. And then when you contact them directly and say, hey, this is me, and you tell them, I mean, you give them the heads up before you send the email, then the email gets sent. Majority of the time, more than half of them will read it. They'll open it and they'll see it. They'll see the newsletter. They'll go to the website, and depending on what you send them and then maybe a few of them will purchase. Now, when you go back to them and say, hey, did you sign up? Did you see anything you liked? Is there anything I should change? Then it makes them go a little deeper. That's when they go and take that second look and then they might find something that they like and they'll buy it. And then if they, even if they don't like something, they'll buy something for a friend or for like a birthday that's coming up and they'll say, okay, I'll buy this from this guy and then, uh, or girl, and I'll set it up as a gift, you know? So you might get that kind of purchase, which is great. But when people start their business and they release collections, they're already, I don't want you to have the idea that, hey, I have this many family members, this many friends. I know these, a couple of these people don't have money, but may, all of these other people have money. They're definitely gonna buy. Don't start out that way because then you're just setting yourself up for failure. And then you're just chasing them around instead of focusing on your business. They are, what I like to call an add-on. So you focus on the business selling to people that you don't know, and then when whatever comes in from them, that's just add on to what you're already making. You know, that's just adding to the bucket, you know? So uh, yeah, this video is, is basically about uh, friends and family. Um, be consistent, you know? When you're gonna start your brand and you're, you're making that first introduction, when you're introducing your brand to your friends and family, try to get feedback and try to be consistent with the releases. If you tell them, hey, it's gonna come out on Friday, it needs to come out on Friday. They might not check it on Friday, but at least it came out when you said it was gonna come out. So then if they make an order, they don't they don't think, hey, I'm gonna have to wait a month to receive it. No, you have to treat them the same as you would treat any other customer. When they make a purchase, you have to ship that thing as soon as possible because you know us as small business owners and you guys starting a brand, you have to, you're competing with Amazon. You're competing with Walmart, who is now doing two day shipping like Amazon. And, uh, you know, all these other big brands are starting to do the same, signing up contracts with these uh, delivery companies and getting getting uh, faster shipping, you know, as they have locations everywhere. So you have to compete with that. So I'm not saying, you know, when you first start out, you have to ship things the same day or next day, but eventually you're gonna get to that point and that's gonna be a great feeling. Because as the order comes in and you pack it and already throw it in the box ready to go to drop it off at the post office, 
you know you don't have to worry about that package anymore and the pre the person your, your person making the order they're going to receive the tracking information and they know that they're not going to have to worry about their package any longer so that's a great feeling and it helps when the customer sees that they place an order friday morning friday afternoon four o'clock tracking information is already set you dropped it off at the post office before they closed on friday saturday morning the post office scanning it in so then when that person goes and checks their email the next morning and checks their routing number their tracking number ups already has a, a us ups or usps they have the the mark you know they have the the check mark that they checked it in so another thing you can do for let's say you're going to go to a post office while they're still open or you go uh it's not great to do this before they close but if you go there while they're still open you can walk up to the desk because you know they have the slot where you can drop the packages that gets scanned maybe that night or the following morning but if you go up to the to the counter you can get her to scan it then or him you get the counter person to scan it in and then they toss it in the same bucket that is going in the other one but maybe they have a separate bucket i don't know what they have back there but uh at least it'll be marked off it'll be hey checked into this location to this post office and then the customer when they check it they'll see it you know and it is a little bit faster because uh i've shipped some packages and in shopify you can go into the order so you you create the shipping label shopify already adds the tracking information in there you don't have to do anything and this is not a shopify promo but that's just what i use so i know you know how the system works and the next day you can go into that order again to the previously fulfilled orders and you can click on that person's name click on the tracking number and then it'll take you to the usps website uh or ups website i use usps uh for smaller packages and you can see the okay this stuff i dropped off last night it's nine in the morning they still haven't checked that in you know but i drop things off uh just so you know i drop things off late night i drop things off at 10 o'clock at night my post office you can you can go in 24 hours a day and you can drop things through the slot uh because uh they do have a box outside but i, I just don't trust it uh i just take it in, and there's not enough space um once you get a little bigger and you you have consistent orders i'm not big where i have consistent orders every day but whenever i launch a sale or i do or i launch a collection uh, i'm going to talk to you guys about collection in a different episode uh collection drops and drops period uh when i when i launch a sale then i do have pretty consistent ads i, I kind of know uh not not right now with the facebook update with, as far as ads but i can i can kind of guess how many orders i'm going to get a day and i can you know you can kind of guesstimate um everything is not promised but especially when it's not holiday season you you really don't know but uh if you time things out correctly if you have the right clothes if you have the right product uh you know you have to keep testing products but uh, it depends if you're building a brand or you're just doing a t-shirt business uh we'll talk about that in a different business in a different episode too but uh this is to just remind you to focus on the business have a checklist on your phone or have it on the wall post it on the wall i have uh behind the camera here i have a dry erase board and i have a list i have three columns i'm gonna look at it now but i have uh social media so that one i put down the post that i have to post so let's say instagram so i do the regular instagram posts instagram stories instagram reels then you have TikTok and you have facebook facebook is basically stuff that gets posted from instagram to facebook once you check it off you know it goes automatically over there but what you can do is you can go on the facebook business pa uh, manager uh, page and you can schedule your post out from there so we'll talk about that in a different video but uh i don't do this i still do things in the individually so i post for, uh pictures from my phone i don't go onto the business manager page and schedule posts out yet um i do use canva for designs and when you have the canva pro package you can link one of your accounts so you can link one instagram one facebook and one twitter account and i believe they're integrating TikTok soon you'll be able to link those accounts into your canva account and then you can schedule your posts uh for the next 30 days because you uh you can schedule for 30 days out you can schedule one post for each account so you can schedule it out that way on canva but you have to pay for that for canva pro so it depends on what you guys uh prefer and what you guys use because i have canva pro and i also have photoshop so having both it comes in a little handy but it doesn't because in canva pro uh there's not a lot of fonts and stuff like that i'm rambling now but 
I'll talk about this in a different video, but I'm going to cut one off basically, uh, Photoshop or Canva. And since I schedule things out automatically on my phone, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to cancel out Canva, but it is pretty convenient. Um, okay, so I have one column for social media, then I have another column for ad budget. So the ad budget column, when you're first starting out, let's say you don't have an ad budget. In that ad budget section, what I did was I had the amount of viewership that I wanted from my posts. So how do you get that? So when you post on social media, I'm posting once a day, sometimes twice a day. When I first started out, it was three, four times a day. Now you post three, four times a day just to build engagement to get people used to seeing your posts and to keep checking your posts. And then uh, people go and, and bring it a little back and they, they post once a day. But because I'm posting in different sections of the platform, I'm doing stories, reels, and regular posts, I post once a day and then I just spread it out. Sometimes I do them all in the morning if I know I'm gonna be busy uh, or I'll, I'll spread it out. I'll do one in the morning, first thing I wake up, 7, 8 a.m., another one at one, another one at uh, six. So you like to do it. I like to do it after dinner time when people are sitting, when they're already home and they see the post. Um, you can do one late night if you wish. And then that one kind of filters through into the morning and you can look at the numbers there. When you have your Instagram account, change it to business in the settings and then you'll be able to see the insights. Once you have a certain amount of followers, uh, you'll be able to see the insights of how many people viewed your uh, posts, uh, your followers, how many followers viewed it and how many uh, random people saw it based on your hashtags and stuff like that. So based on my hashtags that I pick and the amount of posts that I put, I want to hit a certain number every day of people that are going to see my post because let's say 10,000 people see your post, maybe five of them will click on your bio. Well, no, maybe like 20 of them will click on your bio, but only like three to five will click on the link in your bio to see the website. So it's a lot of work. So what I was doing was in the beginning, before I had a Facebook ad budget or a ad budget, because I mainly use Facebook and uh I'm starting to use TikTok now. Um, I would post, put the hashtags, then I'd go to the explore section, look at similar pages, go to their pages, go to their posts, start liking, start commenting on each one. You would go to one account, go find the three pictures you like, comment on them, try to pick newer posts because then people are still commenting on those and then they'll see your post and then they'll get people or, and then what I was also doing was I was doing the like, I would, well, the follow. So I was liking other people's comments. I was liking the post and then I was going, so I would find a picture, go to the likes to so say two, 300, 400 likes, click on that, just scroll randomly, stop, click that account, go to that account, like, write a comment, do the same thing, keep going, go back to the likes, do the same thing again and keep going and keep going and keep going. But it, the one thing you don't want to do, now this is one issue I had in the beginning. This is where you learn from my mistakes. When I go to a person's post, so let's say you go to Supreme, you go to the Supreme's page, you go to their post, and then you go to their likes and you find their followers that are liking their stuff and you click on it and you like it. Then when you go to like another post, some people go from that account, which is what I was doing. I was going from that account. So I went from that guy, I went to his friends and started liking things. It's not guaranteed that his friends like those things. I mean, it's likely because we all run in packs, you know, we kind of hang out with people that like the same things, but it's best to go back to the Supreme post, to the original Supreme post, go to those likes, to the people that like those and keep going for people that are engaging with Supreme. If your brand is similar to Supreme's or, you know, in a similar theme, you know, streetwear brand, which is what I would like my brand to be, uh, Tiny Menace Apparel. So, um, so do that, you know, bounce around, and sometimes I, I tried the follow thing where you follow uh, 500 people one day, then you wait uh, two, three days, you get 100 follows back. Maybe f it used to be more before, but uh, when I was doing it, when I was doing the follow for follow months ago, I would follow 500 people and maybe 40 people followed back. And then because I didn't have the app that told me who followed me, because there's apps that tell you, you're following this many people, these are the ones that are following you, then you can uncheck all the other people it'll automatically unfollow those people from the website. Uh, I was doing it manually. I had to go into each person and say, hey, this guy's not following me, unfollow, unfollow. And then you have to unfollow 350 people and then go back, take a break, do it that same day. I would take a break, wait till the following day, then follow another 500 people 
And then uh, if you look at my account now, I don't know what the number is now, but uh, at the time of recording this video, I have 140 real followers. So a lot of accounts you're gonna notice have fake followers and I'll do that in another video, but those uh, 140 people, I have a, a great engagement. I mean, you don't see as many likes, but you see the post interactions in the in the rhythm and the algorithm. So you can see I have 140 followers and 80 something, 86 is looking at my post, which is pretty good. Uh, they're not interacting with it, but that's because I'm not, I don't have a call to action with my post. I'm not telling people, hey, uh, link, click link. I tell them click the link in the bio. And very few do. I get two, three uh, link clicks to websites per day. Uh, but they, they, I don't get as many likes as I should is what I'm saying. All right, so that's ads. So now I have social media posts, advertisement, and then brand building. Brand building is completely separate because brand building is when you start planning out ahead for your next collection. Uh, so I have the collection ready for back to school, which is a small little collection that's gonna be released for back to school. Then it's the winter collection where you start pushing. We're right now at the time of the recording of this, we're in the summertime. It's gonna be 91 degrees today and you can't sell hoodies right now. You can't sell sweatpants right now, but you have to plan for that for when the weather's gonna change in a few months or in a month and a half, two months. And I have that there. So it'll be back to school. It'll be sweatsuit season. It'll be Halloween themed stuff. Then it's family oriented stuff for Thanksgiving and Black Friday and Christmas. And that's the year. And that's how you do it. So I'll talk in a different video about collections, about dropping, if you're gonna drop things every week, every two weeks, every three weeks, uh, once a month. It depends how you want to release your uh, designs. I'm not in a collection schedule right now. I release things as I wish. So basically, uh, I won't release things until I have four or five designs put together, ready to go. Now, if you watch my other videos, you know that my children, they draw the kid, the kid stuff. So when they have their designs ready, which they typically do, they have about 20 designs each ready to go. And they want all of them to be put up for sale. But you know, I mean, it's very expensive to have these things printed. So um, we have to pick the best ones and set that up. And then I have to pit, put my designs in for the adult stuff. And then we drop the collection all at once. So that's pretty much how we do it. So, you know, get a dry erase board or write it on your phone, have a, a task thing and set up uh, a task there for things you want to complete. I have one for this video right here uh, telling me to record this video. Um, I have two, three videos already scheduled to come go out, but I like to stay ahead of it because I'm busy. So in the other videos, uh, maybe I'll use the machine some more. I'm going to use the hat press to put the neck labels in. I'm going to order some uh, tags here for the side that I'm going to press here on the on the neck on the on the hat press and also i've seen some youtube videos and some instagram uh, posts and tiktok posts on uh people using their thermal printers their label printers to print stickers so i'm gonna do that and put that in another video too and that's pretty much it all right thanks for watching check out tinymedicineapparel.com if you want to support uh go there and uh buy something um it really helped me out uh help us out and you know if you want me to check out your site put that in the comments or go to the instagram message uh the messages at tiny medicine apparel and you know it's everything uh instagram facebook twitter everything is the same tiny medicine apparel uh but message put this put it down here in the comment section and on youtube and then uh i'll check out your website maybe i'll do a review where i'm reviewing everyone's website I'll, I'll message you guys to ask you guys if it's okay to post it and i'll uh i'll set something up all right thanks Thank <laughs> you.